Hello. I just wanted to talk about um, different types of uh, protoboard, uh, ways to develop um, your ideas and to make them work as actual circuits. There's different ways of doing it, there's different types of board and uh, ways of putting together projects to do tests with. Um, probably one of the most famous is this one, which is uh, Vero board. Um, it has uh, copper strips on, on the back. If you can see that, I don't know if that can focus or not, but it's co basically copper strips this way with lots of holes in. And on the other side, it's just blank. Um, so that allows you to uh, put in any components you like, really, but it's actually designed with a 0.1 inch uh, spacing uh, or pitch. And it means it'll take uh, chips or chip holders and it just drops right in. All the pins are exactly the right spacing, which is very handy for building uh, projects with. Um, once that's in the board, you can flip it over and you can solder the, uh, the pins on the other side. I'll demonstrate this in a second, like later on. There's also a tool you can get called a Vero tool, which allows you to, uh, you put it in the hole, give it a twist, few times you can use a drill bit as well that works as well um, but there is a specific tool you can get which has got a nice handle on it and everything and it allows you to break the tracks where you don't want it to conduct so with Vero board you end up with a combination of um, broken tracks where you don't want a connection and wire links on the other side where you do want the connection so um, the combination of the two you end up with a circuit with populated with components and I've got one here which is uh, something that I was working on uh, a while ago just to give you an idea of what it can look like if you haven't seen this kind of thing before um, that's ferro board this is actually tinned ferro board it's uh, tinned on the other side which is quite nice makes it a bit easier to solder but essentially it's exactly the same uh, as the copper strip um, and I've got a, um, a pick uh, chip on there and uh, which is a microprocessor with software in it well firmware and some other components you can see I've got some LEDs and some connectors and that sort of thing uh, this is actually a motor controller for an XYZ pan tilt system with uh, remote control uh, motors on the ends <laughs> so this can be operated through CAN bus uh, from a remote controller and it was for a client of mine a while ago, which never actually took off, but never mind. I've kept the uh, kept the prototype. Um, this would have been eventually, had I been given the go-ahead on the project, um, it would have been put onto PCB, redesigned onto a proper circuit board, and commercially available. That's the prototype on Vera board, and it's fully functional. I can power that up and it actually works. Just to give you an idea, if you've never seen that kind of thing before. Um, another type of board you could use is uh, this looks very much like Vero board it's got the uh, the hole spacing it's exactly the same hole spacing 0.1 of an inch um, or pitch if you like between pins but there's no copper on either side so it's just uh, an insulated board with holes in it and this is good um, if you want to just put components on quickly and then just use wire links for everything so if you just want to use wire links to connect, maybe you're going corner ways, maybe it's got a strange pin out, you want to, you want things going all over the place. It's not always not always the right way to go using copper uh, strips. Sometimes it's better just to use wire links. So that's another option. But it does mean you use a lot of wire. Um, this is also very broad, um, with bigger hole spacing. Um, so this allows you to put in things like uh, transit you know big power transistors and uh, triax that kind of thing where you've got a larger a larger hole spacing um, but essentially exactly the same with copper strips on the other side for bigger components and big relays that sort of thing here's another type of proto board um, which is just like um, Vera board again this time it's got some silk screen on on the top which is handy it's got numbers you can see that I don't know if this is in focus actually um, 
it's got numbers down the side so you can do like grid references if you want to map out where the components go uh, the difference is with the copper is that uh, these are short strips with insulation between them or insulated areas between them and it means that you can you can drop a, um, a chip in there or a chip holder and you don't actually have to break the tracks between the pins um, they're already done so that means put these are specifically for putting in like high density chips where you've got like a, maybe three or four or five chips on a board or something like that and you don't want to have to like get your Vero tool out or your drill bit and break all the tracks all of the time this stuff's handy it also gives you um, a VCC like a power rail so you and a ground but this, this board's been chopped it would have been bigger I've done other things with it and I've chopped it up <laughs> so it's not complete anymore but that's the idea so you've got a ground plane at the top uh, so your power supply at the top ground at the bottom and a lot of um, a lot of the tracks are already in the right place for you. You don't have to keep breaking them all the time. You still end up using wire to interconnect things, but it can be a little bit quicker than, uh, than the standard Vero board option. Um, the other way to go about all this is um, talking about building prototypes. These are one I built, I built earlier. And um, this is a type of proto board as well. Um, this is just like a plastic holder really with lots of holes in it again 0.1 inch spacing um, and that allows you to uh, put chips straight in or in this particular case uh, a display uh, unit I've actually got a display unit in there and that allows you to uh, just plop it straight in because it's got an edge connector on it well a sorry a dill connector in line connector and that just goes straight into the board and then you can uh, I've got a chip on there uh, and uh, various other components and I've got it linked up to a Arduino uh, board there as well doing some stuff um, you use these jumper wires and these uh, these are used just to plug into the board itself and then you can connect various parts to the board to where you want them the beauty of this type of system proto board is that it doesn't require any soldering so maybe if you're just starting out and you know maybe your soldering skills are not brilliant yet um, then this is great just to lash up circuits and try things out you know you can get a few chips on there and you can you can have a good play and actually build working circuits it's also got some handy terminals on the edge as well for power supply and that sort of thing anything you like really different colored uh, knobs on the end there you can put your wires in for power what have you so that's another great option just for trying th ideas out where you don't even need a soldering iron. Um, that's the Vero. Um, later on, you may get a bit more advanced and you might start thinking about making printed circuit boards, PCBs. And at that point, things change a bit. It's more advanced, it takes more time, um, but you end up using stuff like this, which is basically copper clad. This is FR4. Uh, copper clad board single sided so on one side you've got insulated material uh, in this particular case it's fiberglass and on the other side it's just one big sheet of copper there's no tracks like what you saw with the Vera board and this stuff is basically the beginnings of a circuit board of a PCB and you would use here uh, there's different ways to do this to you actually need to get tracks onto the board and the way that you get tracks or interconnections, if you like, onto the board, you can use a computer uh, with something like a program called Eagle or anything like that. There are various, there's lots of different softwares you can use uh, for designing PCBs. Um, Eagle's just one of them, or AUKAD. There's different ones, but anyway, um, there's one out there called Easy PC, I believe it's called, or Free PCB, which are indeed free to use. Um, with that software, you can design your actual track layout, which is a process in itself. Getting the tracks onto the copper, there's different ways to do it. The classic way of doing it, the professional way of doing it, is to use a photographic process, where you end up with a, um, if you like, a transparency sheet, and it's it's, a, it's exposed with ultraviolet. Um, that then creates um, a board that you can put through an etch through ferric, ferric chloride which removes the excess uh, copper and you're left up with tracks. So there's a bit of a three or four part process involved in doing that. 
Another very basic way is just to take a, uh, a marker pen, uh, like an etch resist pen, and you can actually draw the tracks on. So you don't need any computer or anything. But of course that's going to be a bit rough, unless you're you know, a really good artist or something. Uh, I'm not. Um, you know, you can actually do simple circuits using a pen. And then you put that through the etch resist, through the ferric chloride, and that will remove the excess copper and again leave you with a PCB. Another option to get the tracks onto the board is to use um, let me see now, is to use a transfer process from a laser printer where you can print uh, the sheet out. It's all in reverse Im mirror image. You put the sheet onto the board and you iron it on with a with an iron. No steam or anything. <laughs> Just hot. And uh, you can actually iron the transfer or the toner onto the board and then you can put that through the ferric chloride yet again they all end up going through ferric chloride at the end it's just the only difference is how do you get the tracks onto the board so there's different ways of doing it if you go that way well just before I just before they do that I mean you, you can get uh, double sided as well that's a double sided piece of copper uh, copper clad so that means you can do tracks on the top and on the bottom but essentially that's all it means less wire and, and more copper tracks um, right and here's one I made earlier <laughs> a classic TV um, this is a memory unit that I designed for a radio uh, for a Yasuo radio uh, and it replaces the old now obsolete memory uh, board that goes in this particular radio so I designed a new one for it and this uses surface mount components if you can see that, I'll see if I can get that into focus. I don't know if that's actually going to work or not. This uses surface mount components, and um, as you can see, it's got PCB tracks on there as well, and it's actually double sided, so you've got tracks on both sides. And that was designed on the computer, and um, that was actually done using the toner transfer method. Um, it wasn't done photographically. I had tried, I've tried using photographic methods in the past and it's always a bit hit and miss. It's never really consistent. Um, you really need to send it away to a company who will professionally make your board for you. And if you ever get into doing things like this commercially, that is how you do it. You don't, you don't try and make things at home other than prototyping like this is. You know, you always end up taking it to a, a professional company, usually one of the places in China who will uh, actually manufacture your board from your software design, usually as a Gerber file. I'm glossing over a lot of things here in one video. It's just a, a basic outline, just to give you a feel of the different ways you can go with making boards without going too much into detail. Um, yeah, so that's the sort of thing you can achieve. That's That was made at home. I mean, that's just made here on the bench um, from the computer, and then it went through a uh, a toner process, uh, ironed that onto the board, double sided, uh, taking care to get all of the registration correct so the top layer is exactly in line with the bottom layer because you need to drill holes. Everything's got to go through and meet the other side correctly. And uh, and then put through the uh, the uh, ferric chloride etch resist, etch resist path. <laughs> and that's what you end up with. And that's basically it for now for the. Um, the appreciation of different types of prototyping. I hope that's give you a little bit of a feel for different ways that you can go. There are options. If you're a total beginner, you may want to go for the proto board. Uh, that will get you started straight away and you don't even need a soldering iron. So that's really the very beginnings of uh, making your own circuits and trying things. You can put chips in there, have a play, you know, 555 timers, things like that. And get LEDs to flash on and off, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, probably after that, if you're, if you're okay with soldering, um, have a go with Vera board. Uh, probably just the standard 0.1 inch matrix uh, Vero board, and that'll allow you to populate with chips and, tra and, and transistors and resistors and all that kind of thing. And you know, and then you end up with something which will, you know, something of that sort of nature that I was showing you earlier. That's the sort of thing you can do. I mean, I've seen some Vero boards, and they're like huge, you know, <laughs> like a foot square. Where somebody's really put a lot of time and effort in and they work you know it can actually work okay well that's it for now in part two i'm going to actually make a little circuit we'll put a, a chip on there probably a 555 timer and uh, we'll build it and uh, 
put some power on we should see an LED flashing on and off. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for now.